<laughs> hey. All oh, of you people man. who are waiting for episode 666, remember how you feel right now, because later on when you say, oh, that kind of sucked, just remember how you felt right after the intro was over. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to the Atheist Experience Live. I'm your host, Matt Dillon. And joining me this week, Jeff D. Hi, Matt. This is episode number 666, um, and we couldn't care less. Uh, we're, we're, we're really glad that, that uh, Daniel put together a special intro for all the people who actually do care, uh, but the whole 666 thing is pretty much nonsense, and apart from... I don't know, discussing it if it comes up. Uh, there's nothing any more special today about episode 666 than... Than the fact that I'm wearing a Fantastic Four t-shirt. There you go. I'm not actually in the Fantastic Four. Yes. But for fun, uh, I found this, do they this utility where somebody wrote a 666 finder where you can enter your name and figure out if you can make it, turn it into a 666. Uh -huh. So um, if we take callers today and you'd like to find out whether or not your name is 666able. Uh, uh, what are they it. doing to turn it into 666? Basically, they use kind of a modified geometria type thing, which is part of uh, like Hebrew Bible mysticism kind of because stuff? Hebrew letters are also numbers. But English letters aren't numbers, which means you can make the English letter any number you want. So you could maybe start with A equals 1, B equals 2, etc. Uh -huh. Or if you start with A equals, I think, 9, uh, Jesus turns out to equal 666. Uh, wow. Yeah, so, and if you start with, you know, like 138 or 163 or whatever it was, uh, Matt will turn out to equal 666. It's a bunch of nonsense. Hey, there's Frank. <laughs> I saw Frank. We had a glimpse. So anyway, thanks for tuning in. It's Sunday, July 18th, 2010. We are live. This is a public access television program sponsored by the Atheist Community of Austin. Uh, the Atheist Community of Austin has weekly meetings every Sunday at Romeo's on Barton Springs Road beginning at around 1130, except for the first Sunday of the month when we host our lecture, ser lecture series at the Austin History Center located at the corner of 9th and Guadalupe beginning at around 1215. Um, this, as I mentioned, is a live call-in show. We'll have the number up for you very shortly. The lines are already full, so we're not going to waste a whole lot of time. We're going to move on to calls just as soon as our uh, call screeners get us a list. And... If you don't make it through on the telephone today or you don't want to, you can email tv at atheist-community.org. That email address goes to myself, the co-host, some of the people behind the scenes. Uh, we can't possibly answer all of them. As a matter of fact, by a strange coincidence, um, I had 666 emails in my inbox at one point this morning. It's down now to like 650 or so. Uh, we do try to answer uh, quite a few of them, um, but they all do, do all get read as long as they get past the spam filter. And if you're, going to, if you're going to email, please include AETV or NPR for Nonprofits Radio in the subject line, and that'll make sure that we, we actually get it. In addition to the Sunday morning brunch or lecture series, we have a number of other events throughout the week that we host, including Atheist Happy Hour on Thursdays at the Dog and Duck Pub beginning around 7 o'clock. Um, and after this program's over, everybody involved gets together for dinner at Threadgills at 301 West Riverside Drive. Any atheist or atheist-friendly person is welcome to come to any of our events. You don't have to be a member to attend, uh, but if you come down to preach, proselytize, or provoke, please don't. Just pick up your phone. Two more P words that one of them doesn't sound like it. See, I, I see what I did there? Come on now. Yeah. All right. Uh -huh. And give us a call, and we'll, we'll talk about whatever you want to on the air. Uh, as a reminder, September 25th from 6 to 8 p.m. is this year's uh, ACA Bat Cruise, where we take a boat out on Town Lake, and bring along some snacks and drinks and watch Austin's enormous population of metropolitan bats. And I don't think they wear suit and ties, but they live in the downtown area. So you're welcome to come to that. There's more information at the ACA website. It's www.atheist-community.org. And it'll actually be preceded by uh, a lecture at the, uh, we're going to use the facility of the Unitarian Universalist Church uh, here in Austin. And I'm going to do the superior, Superiority of Secular Morality lecture just before we carpool down to, to the boats. So how are you doing, Jeff? Good. Do you feel particularly, I don't know, evil? Satanic? No. Evil, satanic? No. 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 It's just a number, a big round number. Yeah. I'm reminded of when, uh, when uh, the year 2000 was, was coming when along, and I was hosting this show. And, um, and for the year leading up to that, we did a segment called uh, The Rapture Report was tracking all of the claims of, uh, from various lunatics saying that, oh, this or that interpretation of the Bible meant that on January 1, 2001, uh, Jesus was going to return. And he, he didn't. Yeah. And it's, it's you know, I, I'm not particularly 
interested in uh, the whole 666 phenomenon. It wasn't even uh, when I was a Christian. I mean, obviously, it, it, there are contingents in the Christian community that take it seriously and are, you know, oh my gosh, this is the mark of the beast and uh, a microchip is the mark of the beast and, you know, your tattoos are a mark of the, whatever. Um, and they go looking for people's names that add up. Protestants have been doing it since the 1600s, uh, coming up with the, the Catholics are the beast, um, right down to, you know, the, the papacy and, and dealing with their titles and stuff and converting those. And there's a, there's a small contingent with some older manuscripts that say that the actual number of the beast is 616, um, although most scholars still go with 666, and most scholars uh, say that it was a kind of a hidden way of talking about the Emperor Nero at the time. So I don't know, I'm not even sure I can really grasp the whole kind of obsession uh, with this thing. 666, though, is a fascinating number in that it's a triangular number. What so if mean? you add the, the sum of all the normal numbers, or, yeah. uh, or natural numbers, from 1 to 36, yeah. uh, you get 636, which basically means that it becomes a triangle or a pyramid. So it's 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, so 4. You can hold that up for the camera. Just, yeah, you can't see my little circles. Right. But if you kept doing this all the way uh -huh. to like 36, then you add that up, you get 666 dollars. So uh -huh. Neat stuff. Yes. Anyway, we got calls waiting, and we don't want to waste any more time on numeric nonsense. So we've got Warren in Canton. How are you? Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. Hi, Warren. Hey, uh, I had a, a, something that's been bugging me here lately about uh, this supposed statistic that you see. Uh, I think there was a Pew Research poll done like five years ago or something that says that I believe it's 16% of Americans would call themselves uh, non-believers or something to that effect. Um, first of all, I think if that poll were taken again five years later, I think that number would be considerably higher anyway. Um, but I, I seriously doubt that that poll asked the proper questions as far as determining if someone is truly a God believer or if they're just somebody that says, well, yeah, I'm a Christian, just like so many people do because they don't know a different answer to give. Well, and, there have been a number, a number of statistical studies like that, um, that. I don't know how many of them a ask the appropriate questions, but they get lots of different numbers. For example, on uh, the best estimate of people who self-identify as atheists is something perhaps at or around 1% with people who identify as secular, non-theistic, non-religious being somewhere between 13 and 18%, and th those numbers are rising. So, I mean, well, not, what I was thinking, you know, I think Bill Maher had mentioned in one of his little spiels a while back that we, even if it's 13 to 18 percent, that's a, that's a larger minority than, say, the elderly and homosexuals and so forth, and we need to, to let the politicians know that. Um, but what I was thinking, though, is I really think that that number is considerably higher if, if the proper questions were asked. And I think that if someone were to do a poll, for example, that really asked, do you own a Bible? Have you attended church since you were six years old? Well, I own a Bible. Yeah. Well, but, you know, I've actually talked to a lot of supposed Christians that don't. They don't own a Bible. They've never read one. They haven't been to church since they were children. I, I, I think we're just, we're just saying, how's that the right question then? The, the, well, quest, the question is, if, do you believe they, that there is a God? No, That's the question. If, if you, you were to that, keep healing sorry. them, that they would actually admit finally that they just know that word Christian. They don't really know what a Christian is. They don't know what it means to be one. And I think if more people were honest about that and forced to give the proper answer, I, I think the, the, the proper number would probably be more like 30 percent of Americans, but I'm just, you know, that's a guesstimate. But, but, but even like, those, but even those people you're talking about, but even, sorry, even those people you're talking about, who cares? We're not just concerned with the Christian idea or what somebody else's definition of proper Christian is. The correct question, as Jeff was saying, is do you believe a God exists? And I think a lot of those people who you're identifying that you say identify as perhaps Christians without owning a Bible or knowing what it means to other Christians would still say yes to that question, and that's the relevant point. Uh, yeah. Probably so, it, yeah. But but my, my point for bringing this up, though, I think what would be helpful for the atheist community is you've got the Sarah Palins of the world and so forth and the Pat Robertsons of the world and that sort of thing that are speaking supposedly for everyone that's not a God believer. That You know, they don't just speak for Christians. Uh, or, or everyone that is a God believer. They're not just speaking for 
uh, the Protestants and so forth, they're speaking for everyone that claims that there's a God, and they push their right-wing agendas or, or their lobbyists push this stuff through because they are a very vocal minority. And I think if these politicians saw that there are more people in this country than what they've been led to believe uh, that don't subscribe to that, that we could have a lot more pull and we wouldn't have so many idiot politicians out there. Yeah, I think but, what, you're, what yeah. you're talking about there is more of a problem for non-Christians who are theists than it is for atheists. Right? I'm, so, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. I think the, the problem you're you're pointing out there is more of an issue for theists who happen to not be Christian theists than it is for atheists. I mean, when, when, if Sarah Palin was, was trying to speak for atheists, well, then we would have an issue. Yeah. <laughs> in general, of course, I mean, I agree with you in principle, it's always better to have more accurate information. But, but I don't but think I, that there's... I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused about exactly what kind of point you're trying to make. And I don't... I don't except your your premise that politicians somehow don't understand that that these vocal uh, individuals uh, don't speak for a large group I think it's a matter of the squeaky wheel gets the grease it doesn't matter if they're speaking for every theist what matters is that they're speaking for a significantly well-funded vocal portion of the theistic population and that's what they're going to try and appease because those people are motivated to take action and do stuff and it's, you know, it, it, the, the solution is to get other people motivated to take action on behalf of their own interests uh, instead of sitting idly by letting someone else appear to be or give their, the, the appearance that, the, that they're speaking for you. Well, it certainly worked for the, the homosexual community. I mean, you've got to give them that. Um, I, I, don't, I guess the atheists are starting to do something similar. Um, but I, but basically what I was saying, though, is I think that there are considerably more of us in this country that, uh, than what is commonly perceived. And I, I think if that were made more public, I think that politicians would start listening. Uh, and you'd, you'd have more people like Obama saying that there are, uh, you know, non-believers in this country to the other politicians that are just offended by that statement, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. you know, he got a lot of heat for that statement. Or he can get a lot of heat for just about anything he does. But well, he's done a whole lot of nothing on our behalf. Yeah, exactly. Um, All right. But okay. yeah, I mean, you you may be right. There may be more of us. I think there there potentially are, and I think that you, you may be right that depending on how you ask the questions, you're going to get uh, different numbers. But none of that matters. None of the poll stuff matters. What matters is what what portion. Not so much what portion of the population is atheistic. I, you know. It's what portion of the population actually cares enough about church-state separation to act and do something and be vocal about it. And so far, and, and by the way, you've got Reverend Barry Lynn and Americans United for Separation of Church and State and other theists who are backing this too. It's just that it's a significantly smaller and less vocal and less well-funded portion of the population. I could care less whether or not somebody's an atheist as long as they're willing to advocate you know, a, a proper application of church-state separation or things like that. You know what you personally That's believe doesn't. Part, so. Yeah, what what somebody personally believes, uh, you know, until it actually has some kind of effect on me, they're entitled to it. I mean, I'm not. I, I still care. I would prefer that I lived in a world that was peopled with rational individuals, um, but I realize that you know I can't impose uh, on other people to, to to force them to be reasonable. But, well, you, like I said, you all are certainly doing your part, so I appreciate that. So. Sure. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Warren. Yeah, thanks for your call, yeah, man. You got Tim in Palm Coast, Florida. Yeah, Matt, how you doing? Good. And uh, I'm a fan of you too, Jeff D. Thank you, Tim. Uh, no problem. Uh, since it's 666, I came to talk about this uh, theory of uh, rapture that was told by my mom. She's uh, a Christian. Okay. Um, she believes that... Uh, <clears throat> It'll be one of the world leaders or something like that, and they'll force some kind of chip on our hand and our head or some kind of tattoo, I, that's a quibble, uh, that'll mark us as some kind of target for some kind of demons with lines for faces, scorpion tails, swords for hands, and kill the crap out of us. Sounds like it would make a great comic book. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. And uh, my question is uh, to her was, what kind of signs would 
our so-called God give us. Uh, I'm an atheist, by the way, but this was when I was Christian. Uh, she told us that the Bible is our only warning, and I'm like, uh, am I the only one that finds something wrong with that? Yeah. And, and what did she say? Um, well, I was just thinking that to myself. I didn't really oh. say it because... Well, I was the kind of Christian that found certain things wrong with the Bible, but I figured that it didn't matter what I thought. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would agree that, and it's something we talked about before, that, okay, if for the sake of argument we take the kind of the standard ideas within Christendom about, you know, apocalyptic things, um, yeah, if that's your only warning, then that's asinine. I mean, what kind of, you know, supposedly caring, loving individual provides a, a cryptic warning in, you know, to, to one small group of people in languages that die out, in texts that get modified and changed, um, with no link back to the originals or no way to confirm the information in it, and then never bothers to update anything in any, in any way that is verifiable. Um, you know, I w you would ask perhaps, you know, where's the Bible 2.0, but that doesn't matter to me because it would just be another text making claims and you would actually need evidence to support those claims. It's, what difference does it make to me if somebody is, is threatening to, to boil my brain with their psychic powers if I have no reason to think that they have these abilities in the first place? You and know, what, you can warn me all day long and I'm just gonna go, okay. And what about all those poor bastards that lived and died for 2,000 years thinking because the, the warning is so vague thinking that it was going to happen to them um, you know how how irresponsible is that don't you you know if you know what's going to happen don't you say you know hey it's you guys this these people living in these these years right here that's the issue for you to be concerned about uh, Wouldn't well, that make kind of sounds like something my stepfather would do that was someone's a joke sorry um <clears throat> another part of it uh by the way only the saints and virgins go to heaven during the rapture and the torture, um, it's 100 years of peace, and then there's 900 years after that of torture, and then everything's cool after that. It's, uh, believe me, I was kind of scared at first when, this is when I was cringe, Christian once again. Uh, this kind of thing scared me, and I'm like, what kind of God would do that? You guys, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Well, but, uh, yeah, I don't understand the obsession with saints and virgins, but. You know, a lot of religions seem to have those obsessions. Yeah, go figure. Apparently. All right. Well, Tim. Well, thanks a lot for calling. No problem. Appreciate it. And while we're we're and queuing up the next. Happy Satan's birthday or whatever this is. <laughs> and while we're whatever you say. Oh, I'm sorry. It says 666 episodes yeah. of this yes. show is what we're celebrating for no apparent reason. So the the lines are actually full, but they're still queuing up the list of callers. Oh, there we go. We got Benjamin and. Paris is no longer online. Uh, well, sorry, well. but the question was, do you agree with Richard Dawkins' position of not identifying children with religions? Yes. Yep. Because, duh. Oh, he's on line one? Benjamin? Yeah, I'm here. Ah, we Hello, got... can you hear me? Yeah, I pushed the wrong button. Here. Hey, Benjamin. Hey, yeah, now you can hear me. Damn, I'm so glad to have you online. Where is Tracy? I, I cannot miss her. She's right there. <laughs> He's off camera. All right. Hello, Tracy. I love you. <laughs> well, we do, anyway, too. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Richard Dawkins, and I just wanted to, to call you because I, I'm really upset when I hear people talking about Judeo-Christian as, um, as a culture. This is not a culture. I mean, I'm calling from, from Paris, yeah, and every time people are talking about religion in, in my country i don't know in yours but they are talking about the protection of our culture you're not allowed you're not you're not even allowed to talk about religion because it's our culture but it is not you you americans have an anglo-saxon culture with a great influence um from uh, judeo -Christ christianity and and in france we are uh, greco latin i don't know if it's the right word but uh, you know people are, are doing this mistake never never take a, a culture as a religion and vice versa do you, do you, do you get, what, what's your opinion on it i mean every day i can hear it i, I think you're you're being a little too strict with the word cultural oh really 
what, what I mean, do you mean? I, I don't I don't necessarily disagree with you, but I think what people mean when they're saying is some kind of colloquial usage where it's this is our group, this is who we are and what we believe, and it kind of forms uh, maybe a quasi-culture. I don't know. A it, significant part of the totality that we would refer to as the culture. I think it, uh, you know, you got to give them that. The, I, mean, uh, I, you know. I admit that <laughs> I admit that here in, you know, in my culture, it's got a long history of uh, a very strong influence from uh, Christianity. I mean, that's just true. I don't necessarily think that, therefore, it's important and needs to be preserved, but as a historical yeah. fact, sure. Well, if, w would your culture disappear if um, ch the church would disappear? Uh, with the with the church, no. I mean, uh, with, your your culture will still be in, in the in the future without church, right? That's what I'm, I'm trying to prove that our culture and no longer need any any superstition. Well, and what, I think that's I think, think? I, I, I I I think that's the relevant point. I mean, um, again, I am familiar with with the history of the United States and not of France, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, over no over time, religion has had periods of greater influence and periods of lesser influence. And I don't hear anybody uh, um, saying, claiming that uh, that you know we lost our culture during those periods of less religious influence. Yeah. No, it's it's a part of the thing. I mean, there we've had the uh, you know two centuries of people not carrying cell phones around, and now we have, and that's pervasive, and that's part of our culture. So, I mean, it, the yeah. cultures change. Yeah, that's Elements the thing. come and go. The there's nothing particularly special about uh, about individual parts of that. That's the point I'd make. Yeah, and so the people who are concerned about. You know, losing their culture to me it remind me of the people who are like you know what am I going to do with my typewriter ribbon now that computers are all over the place? Okay, go, right. Who cares? Yeah. Right. Or it's or it's the or it's it, the religious people who you know currently do have inordinate sway over our society, uh, expressing their concern that they're going to lose that influence. Yeah. Well, I, tough. Yeah, I think it would actually be nice if our culture, for lack of a better word. Um, were changed in such a way that we uh, kind of eliminated superstition across the board. What, whether you want to, no matter how you want to label it, religion, whatever. Um, I, I'd prefer to see oh, that, that kind of change. So it's, the kind of, it's the kind of change that I'm actually pushing for. And so since I'm since I'm doing that, the people who say, "Oh, you're, you know, you're trying to eliminate our culture," if they if if what they mean by their culture is if they identify so strongly with those aspects of superstition that they would that they would no longer be who they are and no longer enjoy uh, or have any identity without that, then yeah, they're correct. I am trying to eliminate that. Uh, but it, I'm not trying to eliminate it by uh, you know, a force or anything. It's a matter of convincing people to give up superstitions in favor of reality. Yeah, um, well, talking about Europe, Islam is actually erasing every culture in my continent, no matter if you're Anglo-Saxon, Latin, or 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 from Eastern, no, yeah, Eastern Europe. The, uh, in my opinion, that's why I was calling religion. Just try to make uh, to to erase every difference between nation, every partic particularity. I don't know if it's the right word, but that's why I'm really concerned about. It's like Richard Dawkins when. Well, when he's talking about Jewish child and Christi Christian child, we we cannot. Well, uh, when you when I hear people talking about my country as a uh, a Christian country, I oh my God, I just want to to make another revolution. I'm sorry, I'm French, but well, you know what? I, well, you know what I mean. Well, anyway, I, I had your 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 opinion on, on that, and thank you very much. Sure. Because, well, and please please give a kiss to to Muhammad for me. Oh, okay. Well, which one was Muhammad? Uh, the one on this side. The cow. Okay, you can do the kiss then. There we go. Uh, okay. Oh, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Benjamin. Hey, now that's Buddy okay. Christ. See you next time. You too. There he is. I can't tell him apart. What was the other one? Oh, they've Muhammad? told me five times and I keep forgetting. It doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, we have Luis in Miami. Hey, guys. How are you? Good. How are you? Great. Um, I, first thing I want to say is thank you, thank you, thank you. 
You're welcome. You're uh, welcome. You're welcome. It's really changed my life. Uh, basically, I used to be like a regular Christian, you know. Uh, I used to pray before every meal, um, you know, go to church when I remember it and all that. Yeah, that's a regular then, Christian. It's the best description I've heard. Pray before meals and go to church when you remember. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And yeah. then after I started watching the show, I realized that I really didn't have a reason to believe. I mean, I just, I just believed because I wanted to believe, and that was it. So I really want to thank you guys. And it's funny because now I'm like the black sheep of my family. I'm the only atheist. So uh, We, we yeah, can sympathize, or at least I can. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks a lot for, for and, calling and, in and tell us. And you're, and you're thanking oh. us for that. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you for making me an outcast well, that nobody hope, likes. We hope that's not too awkward for you. No, don't worry about it. Then can okay. I ask you a question? Good sure. Question? Yes. Uh, basically, I've heard you, I know you guys advocate the view that atheism is a disbelief, not a belief. Um, is there any website where I can find more information about that? Well, you can go to ironchariots.org, the wiki that Russell and I set up, and there's a whole article there um, talking about atheism and agnosticism and atheism versus agnosticism and uh, hard atheism and soft atheism and all that. There's right, the because as far as I know, um, uh, theism comes from the word theos, which in Greek means God, right? Mm -hmm. So it seems reasonable to me that atheism without God, it's just the absence, not the... It's, uh, you know, the positive declaration that he doesn't exist. There, there's a big problem when you start talking about the word. There's several etymological roots. One of them comes from atheos in, in, in French, which would actively mean somebody who believes there are no gods type thing. Um, when you start saying that theism is belief in a god and you put an A in front of it and it means without a belief in a god, uh, you're on shakier ground. It's easier just to say that, look, when I say atheist, this is what I'm talking about, and there's a significant contention of the population that has that exact same usage, that we're not necessarily asserting uh, with the, the positive belief with any confidence that there are, in fact, no gods. We're saying right. we do not believe there are gods, and it doesn't matter whether you can find a website that happens to quote that or a dictionary that happens to include it. Because those are, you're, now you're making appeals to authority, and the only authority you need to appeal to is yourself because you're having a discussion. And if they disagree with you on whether or not you, you should be using the word atheist, that's their prerogative, but you're the one that's labeling yourself that. It's like I don't get right. to define what a Christian is no matter how, how, how much I'd want to. The end okay. of each individual Christian gets to define what that means to them, and as long as we right. can at least uh, come to some understanding, we can then have a conversation about it even if we may not agree on the term. So I, I wouldn't spend too much time trying to, to look into, well, this particular usage came into popularity here, and this word means this, and this prefix means that. Um, by and large, secular, rational, skeptical, atheists pretty much mean the same thing across the board. Okay, got it. Uh, again, thank you so much, and keep rocking on. Thank sure. you. Thank you, Louis. Thanks, Louis. Good luck to you. Louis? Well, it's Miami, and it's given Probably how they spelled it, I was going, yeah. Louis, but, you know. We got David in Austin. Hey guys, how's it going? Good. How you doing? Oh, doing pretty good today. Been a good day. Been a the good things going on. Watching your show, enjoying it. Except for, man, you let some guys with weird stuff just go on and on sometimes. Oh, well. That's okay. We'll see if we let you go on and on. Okay. Well, hey, that, no, that's a good point. Um, <laughs> Matt, you had said just a minute ago. I wanted to get some clarification on from you and, and get your ideas on a couple of things. You had talked about the separation of church and state, and I was hoping maybe I could get you to elaborate just a little on what you personally believe, and, and maybe uh, Jeff can do it too, what you personally believe uh, is, is proper separation of church and state. Do you want to start? No. Okay. <laughs> well, I just finished on the last one. So, um, oh, um... I mean, I don't, uh, okay, I'll start, but my, uh, my personal belief is that it's not up to me, it's up to what the law says. You know, I mean, uh, I have an understanding of what the law says. Is that what you want me to, to explain to you? Because, you know, that you can look fine. that up for yourself. What, what do you want the law to say would probably be, be a better question. I am happy with what the law actually says. So, I mean, and I'm not... The, and the law says what? I, um... 
First the, Amendment, the, come on. It, it, Congress should not make, make no law respecting an establishment of religion Thank or you. preventing the pre-exercise thereof. It's the application of the law, the proper, the, the only proper application of that law is a separation of church and state, which means that the government cannot show preferential treatment for, special treatment for, or uh, or, dis or discriminate against a person based on those uh, things. And I, and I think that it should go far as to not allow religions to become de facto tax-free organizations, that they should in fact demonstrate um, some beneficial, some benefit to the public in order to earn that tax-free status. But that aside, um, what it does mean is that when we are when somebody goes into office, for example, they don't have to stop being a religious individual, but they cannot use their religion as uh, uh, within the, the scope of the function of their office. And right. there is too much of that. There is too much preferential treatment for religions. Uh, it happens by and large with, you know, this fictional Judeo-Christian religion that people have invented in order so that they can cooperate on this. These people who would disagree on plenty of other things. And Islam as well, especially well, these days. Well, I think, I think that you would find that the majority of people in, in the United States, uh, the majority being Christian, would be fine discriminating against Islam. I think, I think that the majority of those people probably would be just fine with, about discriminating against Islam. And here's an example. I'm glad you brought this up. There's a, here in Austin, in the Austin area, there is a bus driver who was fi fired uh, from the Capital Area Rural Transportation System. It's a government agency. It's basically our, our buses and uh, public transportation around Austin. He was dispatched to pick up some women and take them to a Planned Parenthood facility, and he refused on the grounds that it violated his religion, and they fired him. And now he's suing them, this government-run organization, because he's claiming they discriminated against him on behalf of his religion. No, they absolutely did not. He had no business taking a job where he might be required as one of his duties to do things that he feels violates his religion. That's his responsibility. Here's the job requirements. Here's what you're expected to do. If you take that job, you cannot then cry foul when it, they're asking you to do your job and it violates your, how's that different from saying, you know, no, I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to wait on black people because it violates my religion. It's, That's it, one of the things I love about you. You're such a clear thinker. Okay. No, truthfully, I mean, and I've called in before. I'm, you know, I, I don't know if you remember me, but I'm a, I'm a Christian, and I call in all the time, and always thank you guys so much for for the fact that you're doing so much, and in, in that you're uh, 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 offering a service at least to make people think about what it is they believe. And uh, uh, frankly, even as a Christian, I think I, I agree with you wholeheartedly on everything you've said about. Uh, uh, church and state and the separation of church and state. I think I agree uh, line upon line with everything you had to say. Well, okay. You want to get started on the things we disagree on? Oh, my God. Do you really want to give me that much time? Probably not, but, you know, I figured I'd at least offer. Uh, let me say uh, hi to Tracy, your Wonder Twin. Can you do the Wonder Twin Powers Activate thing uh, again? No, nah, we can't at the moment. She's uh -oh. she's busy. But thanks for calling, David. Hey, I love you guys. Sure. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, since we got sidetracked, and I did all the answering. Yeah, I have a uh, question. Yeah. Uh, our our uh, tax-exempt organizations, are they, uh, ex except for religions, are they required to demonstrate a, you know, positive value? Well, what if happened was... If they're not, then I can't see why we would in require that for religions. Sure. And what I'm saying is, I think this should be required for everybody, including religions. Fair and what's enough. happened is they've made they've made a few exceptions. They've just, they've said these are the things that we generally think are in the best interest of the public. Uh -huh. Things like libraries, charitable organizations, things like that. Yeah. And so they can have a tax-free status. Uh, libraries, charities, educational organizations, etc. Yeah. And then they said, oh yeah, and religion. Right. And so anybody who who creates a church and demonstrates that they're a church and is associated, by the way with one of this list of government approved religions yeah. is automatically tax exempt. Uh, Baptist, sure, that's been on the list for ages. Right. Uh, Scientology got on, got worked their way onto the list. Uh, Catholic, yep, you, you start a new Catholic church, it's automatic. But what that does is not only, not only do I have objections to it because they haven't demonstrated that they're providing any public service that is deserving of tax-free status, uh -huh. but it places the government 
in the in the business of sanctioning which claims of religion are religions and deserve a tax exempt status right. and which aren't. And that is the most and this, obvious violation of church state. And this actually came up a few years ago yeah. with the uh, with the Buddhist temple. Yeah. Uh, to me, it's absolutely insane that we that we offer this tax exemption and place the government in the position of saying, uh, "Yeah, you're you're religion and you're not. You're religion and you're not. You're how is that not the government making laws with respect to establishments of religion? Right? How is that not a violation of the establishment clause? I don't know. Uh, the big thing is, is it never gets challenged. You know why? Because we live in a country where 70 percent of the population is benefiting from that. That's it. But Matt in Seattle. Matt. Matt. Matt in Seattle. Okay. Okay. Well, you got on and you said, "Hey, I love the show. Thank you guys." So cool. Uh, Alrighty. What's next? I don't know. He was calling to say something, evidently, about recent findings having to do with the Higgs boson particle proves God. Uh, well, he's welcome to call back. His position is that because the particle pops into existence is the particle accelerator that proves something can come from nothing. Therefore, it's possible God can create something from nothing. But therefore, it would be possible you don't need God to get something from yeah. nothing. Ta-da! Done. We didn't even have to take him on the air. All right. I'm going to roll the dice because... Because we're behind on actually getting our updates, but right, the lines are full. So I have no idea who this is on line two, but you're on the air. Am I on the air? You yes. are on the air. Wow, who, that was quick. Okay. Who is hey, this? Do you guys ever get offers going on mainstream media, like Fox or MSNBC or any of them? No. Do you, would you like to? Sure. Sure. Go ahead. All right. I think are you I'm one of them people? Them and, and suggest it. I mean, <laughs> knock yourself out. I, I, I've said before, as long as it doesn't cost me anything out of my pocket, I'll go anywhere and talk to anybody that wants me to. So, yeah, you know, MSNBC calls and wants me on there. I'm there. Yeah. All right. So on our behalf, you're free to tell them so. All right. Hope you guys do it one of these days. What, what was your name, sir? My name is Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Jerry. Thanks I've for been, calling. I've been watching you since, uh, since you've been on, I believe. 97? By the way, Jeff, I owe you a thanks. Uh, your, your shows on critical thinking mm. were excellent. Thank you, And sir. we even corresponded by email years ago. And um, <clears throat> I taught my son, and now he's a big shot with a big computer company because he uses critical thinking. Awesome. Awesome. Well, well thanks, thanks a lot Jerry. for calling, Jerry. Appreciate it. All righty. Be well. We've got... Is it, it's, well now, it could be Ian and it could be Ian in lacrosse. Uh, it's Ian. All right. Hi, Ian. Um, basically, I called in like about a month ago asking about the transcendental, transcendental argument for God, and um, I think I've come up with a response, and I kind of wanted to bounce it off of you and see if uh, uh, a it works. A res are you calling in to advocate the argument or present a response to the argument? present a response to the argument. I don't know that we need to waste a whole bunch of time on that. We've already talked about why the argument's bunk. Nobody's come up with a new version of it, and a significant portion of the pop of the of the audience is going to fall asleep while we point out yet another thing that's wrong with the transcendental argument. Why don't you just email it to me, since you and I are the only ones that I know are overly interested in it. Okay. Yeah, you can email tv at atheist-community.org, and that'll actually get to me. And just, I don't know, put AETV and tag in the in the subject line, and I'll get to it. All right. Thanks, Ian. I appreciate it. Bye. No way. Well, he sounded disappointed. I know. I, I, uh, you can understand, considering the amount of time that has been spent on such things on this show, that's the thing. why callers might imagine that they can spend some more time on it. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to. I'm trying to move us in a certain direction, and... Uh -huh. I know that if he starts talking about tag, he and I are going to end up talking for 15 minutes, and yeah. that's not what I want to, the show to be. Yeah, I'm just commiserating with the no. poor man. I'm, yeah, I'm sure he's got something very clever. Ian, you get me your email. I guarantee you I, uh, I promise I will make an attempt to answer it as quickly and succinctly as possible. But, yeah. Uh, Josh in Alamiso. 
Uh, hi, hi guys. It's uh, actually Alamosa. Alamosa. Uh, they, they spelled it wrong on here. Oh, now they corrected it. They tried to correct <laughs> yeah. it without me looking at with that. You guys are sneaky. <laughs> hey, Josh, how you doing? Yeah. Uh, pretty well. Uh, first off, I want to say I've you know been been watching your show for about a year, mostly on on YouTube, and you know think you guys are doing a lot of good work. Uh, and so you know I have to kind of throw out my kudos right away. Get Thanks that very much. Care of. Um, but what what I was wanting to talk about um, was I I don't know if you guys heard about this or not, but uh, last week in Argentina, um, they the the country uh, passed. Uh, same-sex marriage rights yeah. to its mm -hmm. uh, citizens, and so um, I, I was listening to, to a couple of radio shows, and you know, thought, hey, you know, that's that's a really cool thing, and uh, you know, hopefully, we'll we as in the United States will start uh, doing something like that. But the 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 interesting thing, and in how this ties into to atheism, I, I suppose, was um, there's you know a, a very large uh, Catholic uh, population in Argentina and, and yet even even that like notwithstanding uh, the the people still decided to to allow this marriage to go through uh, mostly because it was like a human rights issue mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, you know that country has had a lot of history of past injustices and, and whatnot and um, I just kind of thought that that would it's it's kind of interesting uh, looking at this prosecution or persecution, rather, um, and and how the Argentinians are able to recognize that. Yet, a lot of Christians in this country they they seem to hang their hat on the fact that uh, throughout history they've been persecuted by the Romans and by us, you know, uh, militant atheists today. But yet, they 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 can't seem to understand that that flip side to uh, to it. How how the, the prosecuted are becoming the prosecutors. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. But. Okay. 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 So, yeah, that, that's it. Um, uh, keep, keep up the good work and uh, have a good one. All right. I, I, think that, I think the reason that they have difficulty seeing it is because no living Christian that you're talking about has actually probably been persecuted for their beliefs. Uh, either, you know, a handful here and there, you know, maybe, maybe some missionary goes into a foreign country and gets it, but you're, the, the people that you're talking about, um, the, the people who are sitting at home in their self-righteousness after getting home from church and, and deciding that, uh, you know, it was Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve type, yeah. type th those people have no idea what persecution is. Um, they have no idea what it's like to be on the losing end of a rights issue. Um, they have no idea what it's like to to be deprived of something that everybody else benefits from simply because of who you are. And and I would add, they have no idea what rights are in the first place. They think rights are whatever their big invisible friend told yeah. us were our rights. Right? right. They're not looking at it from the perspective of here we are a whole bunch of people who feel differently and think differently and we have to live together, right? What are we gonna what are we going to um, what laws are we going to establish to make it fair for everyone? I mean that they does they don't even start there. That's why there's a problem. Yeah, I, I guess what I was trying to to, to highlight um, was how and 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 just like Matt was pointing out, uh, no no real Christian. I mean, outside of you know some uh, genocidal war in Africa or what have you, has has really gone through uh, persecutions like that. But yet, that seems to be a motif that they really like to grasp onto, especially well, when it's, when, when, when it they works. you know perceive some threat from from uh, evolutionary. But biologists, or um, you know, they can't congregate in a public school building after school hours, you know, to, to have a meeting. And so they're they're very quick to sort of trump up and play up these, you know, slight right. inconveniences. Right, because it, it works. Of, uh, yeah, it works. You can play the victim, yeah, and, and you can lie through your teeth while doing it. Oh, you know, yeah. you guys are persecuting us. You took prayer out of school. No, nobody took prayer out of school. 
what they took was mandatory government-led prayer school. Your kid can still pray in school. Your kid can still take a Bible to school. Your kids can still join the Youth for Christ movement. Your kid can yeah. still do whatever they want in, in, in school um, as long as they're not doing it when they're supposed to be studying and as long as they're not proselytizing to others on behalf of the school, as long as they're not going over the, the speaker and doing morning prayers. That's what was removed. And exactly. they'll lie yeah. and cry, cry foul all day long um, yeah. because it works. And, and it's easy to play the victim. And, and, and yet, uh, you know, can turn on a dime and, um, you know, condemn uh, thousands of people for, for, for their sexual orientation. And, right, because that know, stuff's not, wrong. And not seem to think... Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and not seem to think twice about it. And I'm sure the persecution card is also very effective when you're, you know, you're doing the business of religion, which is fundraising. Yeah. You know, well, as it, soon as, it, as soon it, as this, if it's just some social issue that's happening over there, you know, that's like, you know, abstract and at a distance, um, it's a lot harder to get people to open up their wallets than when you tell them, oh, and you personally, as one of us, as one of us Christians, your rights are being trounced, and that's why we need your money. Yeah. It's to, not to stop them, but to defend you. The, the other reason that they that's don't... That's a lot more appealing. The other reason that they don't think twice about this is all, at all is because they have this idea that what they're talking about is just wrong. It's just obviously wrong. Why would they think twice about it? To them, um, homosexuality is a sin, no different from being a pedophile, being a rapist, being a murderer, and some of them are honest enough to actually say that. Not all of them. The rest right. of them the rest of them will say, you know, well, okay, it's maybe not as bad or, you know, but it's worse than lying, but not as who cares about any of that? They're, this yeah. is something that's wrong, and that's why they don't think twice. It's not a rights issue for them. If you were to ask them, they would say, no, you don't have a right to do that. We're not violating your rights. We are, uh, you know, attempting to impose God's law, which will make the whole world better, uh, despite right. the fact that we already know that it, that it doesn't. Whether or not it's God's law or not, it doesn't make the world better. Okay, uh, yeah, if there's anything I, I can, to learn about this God character, too, is yeah. whether or not he exists, he's been a miserable failure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, don't. Yeah, well, that's that's a whole other conversation for for uh, another day. But uh, yeah, I, I just I just thought that was interesting and uh, kind of wanted to see your your guys' take on it. Um, and and plus the 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 idea I, I, I guess uh, Christians crying foul, um, or I guess any religious group for that matter is is the uh, is the martyr is is a real accessible idea and you, you know there there are so many saints that have been martyred for their beliefs and i i think that's something that they can um establish and and call upon to you know persuade sure. or bend people to do whatever but yeah. yep yeah. well thanks a lot josh i appreciate the call yeah yeah thank you uh have a good one thanks. as a reminder uh after the show's over, we get together and go to dinner at Treadgill's at 301 West Riverside Drive. Any atheist or atheist-friendly person is welcome to join us. We'll be go going on to other calls here in just a second. The example that I've used on that subject before yep. is that uh, if somebody's beating somebody else over the, uh, over the head with a stick and you come and take their stick away, you're not violating their rights. And that is very much the sub you know, what we're talking about. Right. It doesn't matter if that guy with a stick believes that his invisible friend told him it was okay. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah. That, and that, there, that, I guess, would be my encapsulation of the separation of church and state, is that um, you know, your, your rights do not come from what you personally believe some supernatural thing gave you. Your rights come from the, uh, you know, the, the uh, passing of laws uh, within our government. Okay, we got Mike here in Austin. How you doing? Hey, how's it going? Good. Um, what I wanted to talk about was I frequently call and talk. I want to talk about the soul and the existence, my belief in the existence of it. Now, uh, I just want to pose a question to you. If you believe, do you believe that, or do you agree that uh, energy doesn't come from anywhere and it doesn't go to nowhere? Sorry, what? You're breaking you up very badly. The energy Mike. itself does not um, come out of nowhere and then go back to nowhere. Okay. I mean, it, it, it's a non thing, right? Energy. I, I, are are you on a cell phone or a really bad? Yeah, the really is a bad. Come back now. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we're, we're missing like every other word, so uh, it's hard oh, to tell what you're saying. It's a horrible cell phone. Can you hear me now? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. If you do, you agree that energy is a, does not come from nowhere and does yes. 
go to nowhere. I mean, it, it comes yes. from somewhere. I mean, it's an ongoing thing. It's a perpetual. Okay, yes, and? Well, okay, then if co consciousness can be thought of as a form of energy. How do you get to that? It can't. Consciousness is not a form of energy. It's a process. Okay, how do you, how do you say that? I mean, how do you, uh, how do you define that then? How do you explain that? Well, you, you, you'd actually have to demonstrate that consciousness is a form of energy. We know the energy that is involved in the in consciousness, right? There's there's chemical energy, there's electrical energy going on in the brain. Those are two known forms of energy, and neither of them is conscious in and of itself. Where consciousness comes from is the you know the neurons of your brain involved in a process that uses. Uh, chemistry and electricity, and mm -hmm. that that is consciousness. It's not the parts that make it up. It's the process that those parts are undergoing. As an example, that may be a bad one. Um, think of the television that that you're you're looking at. Yes, it uses energy to produce a picture on the screen, and I, I, ignoring the fact that the picture is is made of light and therefore is made up of energy. The picture itself, the subject, the content, the thing that you perceive is not energy right. and it does not exist. It is the product of that. And right. if you think of it that way, it's when, when you turn off the TV, it's not like you've uh, killed off a picture. You've stopped the energy that was producing a picture as a product of that. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Okay. okay. That makes sense. <laughs> I still believe it's a soul, but... Um, Okay, that's very good. It's, that's one I want it's to an hear. appealing, it's an appealing idea to lots of people for lots of reasons. Especially, you know, if, if for example, you've lost a loved one or something, uh, the idea that that they're somehow not gone um, can be very appealing. And and I have no idea whether or not it's true. I have no reason to think it is because nobody's come up with anything that would qualify as a soul. And everything that people want, every attribute that people want to, to give to a soul, we identify as part of the brain. Yeah, I see. Well, the reason I my reason I was thinking about is my mom died about four years ago, and I called in the show and talked to Russell. And he was, he gave me a really uh, nice sanguine kind of a. He said, uh, he said, I guess the Jewish religions, or they try to, or what, what do you try to? People try to celebrate what she had, what she, sure. what she meant to us, and that's how she, that's how she can live on. So, I just, I just thinking about a lot, you know, the soul, and, and um, I just kind of I have a hard time reconciling myself with the fact that it. We come from nowhere, and we go nowhere. I mean, I'm saying. I mean, yeah. when I say we, I just mean us. It, it it sucks, but you know, whatever, there's you know? There, it, we're we are products of nature. We have no particular reason to expect uh, special treatment in the first place. You know, everything else has uh, uh, comes into existence and and survives for a while, and then is is torn apart by natural forces. It happens to us too, and it sucks. If you don't like it, the thing to do is to support research into life extension, because it's it. because because life is fundamentally an engineering problem. All right, right, right. Well, just real quick, do y'all believe in? Um, oh, I lost my train of thought. I'm so sorry. Uh, anyway, thanks a lot, guys. All sure. right, call back if you think of it. Okay. Yeah, we're at. Uh... We've actually got a couple lines open. Russell's actually here. They tried to show him real quick, but there's not good lighting over in the darkened corner where we hide him when we don't let him up here. But but Russell says thanks. Uh, the chat room screamed it out. Wait. Um, oh, there. You're and actually, now Russell is talking out there in the darkened corner. You're actually sitting in the studio a microphone. and reading the stuff from the chat room. I don't know why. I don't either. You're a masochist. We got Tracy in Austin. How are you? I don't either. Okay. Hi, Tracy. Hi there. Tracy in Austin. How are you? Oh, yeah, you're going to want to turn that down so that you don't get the echo and the delay. Like Okie dokie, we'll do right now. All righty. Yeah, um, well, yeah, that's confusing me. That delay is confusing me. Uh, well, my question is similar to that previous caller's. Uh -huh. uh, I was telling the guy there before I was talking to him about getting screened, and I was just saying that I'm not wanting to get into the religious dogma, the Christianity of Muslims and how they've been persecuted and all that, because you guys make a very good point on what you're saying, and I watch from time to time. Okay, but my biggest question is, and I started having these questions, like that dude, my mother died some years back, and I was raised like so many of us were, Christian, or you know what I'm saying, love to Jesus and all that stuff. And some of those days started dying, and I mean basically my whole family just started pretty much dropping. 
and I found myself almost alone. So right. you know what happens normally. What happens? Well, then if that happens, then that must not been true. Everything that they taught me is what I'm thinking. Okay. So then it put me on this 10 to 12 year, I guess, excursion into life and death and life after death. And I read a lot of manuals about life after death. These people that die supposedly, and you know, they souls and spirits go someplace else. I don't even want to touch on all that as much as what I want to ask you is one question. How do we, as atheists, if you're an atheist, if I'm an atheist, how do I personally get around the fact that creationists and atheists agree on one thing? And not too many people bring this up, but we all agree on one thing. The whole world agrees on one thing, the whole educated world. And that is, if you go back in time far enough, atheists, scientists, and creationists agree that at some point in time, before there was time, there was nothing. Everyone seems to be able to agree that there was absolutely nothing. Actually, and, 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 and all I'm saying is this. How did we get here? Because if there's a Big Bang Theory, which is what I'm trying to believe in, which is what I kind of kind of cater to, there's a Big Bang. I have no problem with that. But my question to you is, and I can't believe you don't have this question, because you guys are intelligent people. And... I know you are. I can hear how you talk. We're, we're ready to answer you, sir. So I got to know in your mind that somewhere, somewhere back there, you've got to wonder what made something go bang. And what I'm getting at is, and I'm sure you've heard this before, what I'm getting at is not a God, not an invisible friend or whatever. No, 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 no. But some type of intelligent design mm. seems to just not be able to leave my consciousness alone. I just don't see how we could come from nothing to nothing. Like the old yeah, song it's, goes, it's, the old black song back in the day, nothing from nothing leaves nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, I'll stop and, right there, and I just want to know what you got to think and about you, that. You're engaged. That's, it's an argument from ignorance is what it is. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Um, that's why you have this appeal for intelligent design. First of all, everybody in the world doesn't agree uh, that, about this idea of nothing. And what I'd recommend is that after, after the show's over, the first thing you do is go out and Google uh, Universe from Nothing by Lawrence Krauss. It's, okay. a, it's, a, it's a lecture, a talk he gave at the Atheist Alliance International Convention from 2009. It's going to be about the best explanation of what physicists mean when they talk about nothing and something coming from nothing. Okay. But even setting that aside, what you're basically saying is, I can't see how this could have happened without an intelligence. And that is, that is the definition of an argument from incredulity, argument from ignorance, that I can't understand X or I can't think of a better explanation than X, mm -hmm. therefore X is the most plausible and the one I'm going to accept. And that's simply not true. Intelligence needs to be demonstrated. Okay. And, and, it doesn't and by become you the being default. intelligent, an intelligent being, by the ape being intelligent, by the fish being intelligent, by dolphins being intelligent, I mean, something to me, it, 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 I, I don't know where they come from. I mean, I mean, is that not a question that you ever is, have in your mind at is, all? Is evolution a problem for you, or are you okay with evolution? I'm okay with evolution. That's, well, that's, that's why I got such a problem that, with all my Christian friends, because I'm okay with that, and they really put me out of their house. But my problem is, but Tracy? I think that evolution had a designer, or some kind of a design. Something said, start from oh, here. I see. And then, yeah, then you don't know what I'm... Up, but I then, began Tracy, something. Began something that, Tracy, man, I don't know. Th that, Tracy, what do you think, man? May I? Yes. Yeah, uh, Tracy, but that, that's the whole point okay, right of the up. theory of evolution okay. is how is it that uh, all these different forms could uh, come into existence in all their varied types and with all their varied abilities uh -huh. without intelligence? That's what evolution is about. Now, I know it's very popular for uh -huh. a lot of people who still have an impulse to want to believe that there is a guiding hand behind all of it. It's very popular for them to say, well, you know, maybe the process is tweaked by an intelligence yeah, as it goes yeah, along. Yeah, exactly. But, but the what's point, your what's your but what I'm what, telling what you, what I'm telling you, Tracy, okay. Tracy, okay. what I'm telling you is the point of the theory is that you don't need mm. that. Oh. That, the, that intelligence slapped on top of the process of evolution is extraneous and unnecessary. Okay. And if you think it's not, it's because you don't yet have a complete grasp of what the theory is saying. It, it's like saying that you believe that an oak tree can grow out of the seed, but that you think there's some being who comes along and 
and and bends the limbs just the right way, you know, in no, between. No, 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 my it friend. It is exactly like that. Seed. That's an analogy. Because we Tracy. both agree, and we all agree that it came from that damn seed. We know that. Yeah, but, but what I want to know is where that seed come from. <laughs> okay, from so the now we're back. Before. Well, that's why I asked. That's why I asked about evolution, right? Because if you're okay with evolution, yeah, yeah, then you should be okay with the idea that it just uh, happened. Th no, just a minute. Because evolution didn't just happen. There's okay. natural laws that all of the physical parts involved in evolution are following. And what you just said, they're but, laws. See, this is the plan. See, I'm so mankind. See, because laws come we from call man. Thing, we call things... No, they don't. We call things laws. Maybe it's an analogy. Maybe yeah, it's not. Yeah. Maybe the, the fact that we use the same word for things passed, uh, rules passed by men, and for processes we see happening automatically in nature, okay. right? Maybe the fact we use the same word for those two things is confusing, but they're not the same kind of thing. Okay. Right, then that's not what I mean when I when I use yeah, because when they talk about laws of gravity um, and laws the, of nature, and I, those are like rules and laws. It seems like they're rules or rules of laws, and it they, seems like they, certain things have to follow them. You know, they, what I'm saying? like they, Newton's thing well, of gravity. But I mean, a law seems to have been put into design. Or I don't know, man. Well, I just explained. Can you kind of see what if, I'm getting at? Can you kind of see my dilemma a little on, bit, though? Tracy, if you hang on, he'll explain it. Okay, go ahead. Go yeah, on, yeah. I mean, we just went over that. I mean, it's the same word used two different ways for right. two different kinds of things. There's right. a difference one is, between descriptive is, laws and, and proscriptive laws. Okay. Okay. That's right. A good point. Descriptive That's laws are we look at what is happening and we see the way that nature behaves, right? Yes. Yeah. And we f and we find regularities, and then we say, well, that is the way it behaves. We'll call that the law. Right, okay. the law of gravity, right? That clear. That Laws up. of motion. That makes sense. We're, we're using the word law yes. for a thing we simply observe happening in nature. But the reason why things in nature happen, uh, that that things in nature follow those uh, those laws, is because of the physical properties of those things interacting. Yes. Okay. It's not because some outside force is saying why you know someone has dropped an object, therefore. Why well, command that object to fall to the earth? No, uh, uh, gravity is a natural thing that just happens. Yes. Okay. All right. So the reason I brought up evolution was to get back to the the question of origins. I mean, Matt's advice is probably the best thing to do is go look for Lawrence Krauss's uh, lecture, which will explain this in more detail. But just for the moment, to make this a little easier for your mind to deal with, okay. right? Yeah. You have to. When, it, it's not exact. Uh, um, it is true in a, in a sense that, uh, that the uh, naturalistic view of the origin of the universe and the religion, religious view of the origin of the universe come back to some point where things appear to start. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay? Now, the details and the, the, the much more complex, deep uh, physics details of that you get from that le lecture. But there is a difference between the naturalistic view and the religious view. Okay. The okay. naturalistic view is at that point, at that starting point. Yeah. There's very, very, very simple stuff, right? Okay. There's a hot. Uh, I'm not sure what the right plasma is. Probably not even the right word, right? And we have a physicist here, and he can't you know, jump in in the middle of this. But <laughs> it, but there's just a initial condition that's very hot, very dense, right? I mean, matter hasn't even. Uh, condensed out of this stuff yet. That's what you have on the one hand. Incredibly simple. And then on the religious view, you have an intelligence. And an intelligence is an incredibly complicated thing. So between those two views of that starting point, right, the naturalistic view is the simpler one, the one that takes much less of a leap to accept. See what I'm saying? Okay, okay. And if you can accept that, if you can accept evolution, that, that diversity and complexity and things emerge from the interaction of stuff, yeah. all within natural laws, then you should be able to accept that the, that the you know, uh, uh, galaxies and stars and planets could, uh, could form, out of, according to natural laws, out of that very simplistic set of starting conditions. Right. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Look, look at the difference that what religion is asking you to believe at that starting moment yes. is something much less likely, right? Much more of a stretch 
something hugely more complex, an intelligence, uh -huh. an intelligence that has the, not only that, but it has the power to guide everything else that's happening. Right? Okay. That's what religion is asking you to believe. Yeah, yeah. And, and that, physics is just asking you to believe. I'm sort of having some, some problems with right there. Okay. Uh, my, my biggest problem is what we're talking about is what we're talking about is that starting point, man, that one initial starting okay. point. And that, I guess if I can just we're, wrap we're my recommending mind you, that. We're recommending you watch that lecture. That's the, what I need to do, the, huh, man? The, the other thing that I'd say is that um, not quibbling over the ideas of nothing or whatever else, um, we're at a point where we understand that at some point the universe began to exist in the current form that that we observe it, uh -huh. and we've identified we, we label that in in most ter in most uh, most of the time we label that as Big Bang, Big, Big Bang, Bang, yeah, Big yeah, Bang yeah. cosmology. I mean, it's it's already been confirmed to the extent possible that we can confirm it by cosmic microwave background radiation yeah. that it did in fact happen. So then you say, what happened before the Big Bang? Yeah. Well, Maybe, hang on, <laughs> yeah. it may be the case that that is a bad question that uh, that the nature of time in the universe is such that that, that question just cannot be asked and or, you know, with any coherence and therefore cannot be answered. It may also be the case that the answer is, I don't know. I but, talked about this to another atheist once upon a time, and he told me that exact thing. He said, that's one of those things, Tracy, because he got kind of frustrated with me because I kept going back to that one point. And he said, do you know what? That's one of those things that are just unknowable. And you no, 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 no. How many knows was that? <laughs> I did not say unknowable. No, I didn't say you. I said I was talking to I, a I understand. Atheist, I understand, a, a but you were mine, equating me. You, you were telling me that that was not that. That's not what you said, but that's what he said. And right. So let's not talk about what he said. Let's okay. let's have this conversation between us. <laughs> right. I didn't say unknowable. <laughs> I said that is something that we simply don't know. We may be able to find out. And the, the reason I'm the reason I'm harping on that point is because it's going to matter a whole bunch here in just a second. All righty. Right. What you're saying is that instead of saying we don't know you find it more plausible that there is an intelligence, an intelligence for which you have no evidence, and your argument is that either this is just what I believe or this is just what seems more plausible to more me. More plausible, yes. And, and, and I would ask you, how on earth can you determine that it's more plausible when you have no evidence to support it? Well, it's the same thing. You have no evidence to support what you're saying. Either, no, 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 no. the beginning of the thing. Now, you no. have some evidence as far as the Big Bang, and I agree with no, you on that. And you have some evidence when it comes to evolution. But you yourself have no evidence. We're both having to take a leap of faith how this whole thing got no, started. No, we're not, Tracy. Degree, Tracy, degree. Tracy, no leap of faith. Here, look. Here's a line where this pen is. This okay. represents the Big Bang. And I'm saying... I don't know what happened before that. Okay. And you're saying you believe that it's most plausible that an intelligence caused it. I'm not taking a leap of faith. How dare you represent that I am? You're taking a leap of faith. You're saying that you find it more plausible that there's an intelligence behind it. And I asked, how is it that you find this more plausible mm -hmm. without evidence to support it? Mm -hmm. And instead of presenting evidence, instead you tried to equate our positions as if we're both taking a leap of faith when that's not remotely true. I got you, And you'll remember, you'll remember, you'll remember that mm -hmm. I said it was important a minute ago mm -hmm. that I did not say unknowable. I said I don't know. And you're okay it is with not that for only now. it is not only important because and it's, you're okay with that for now. I'm not only okay with it. Okay. I'm overjoyed go. with it right. because <laughs> because I have not taken a walk down the credulous lane of arguments of ignorance that allow me to posit the existence of a creator for which I have no in, no evidence at all. Because what happens as soon as I start believing that is it curtails all further investigation down that path. A second you s accept an answer as the most plausible one uh -huh. without evidence, yeah. your journey is done. As soon as you say, I don't know, but let's see if we can find out, that's when the journey begins. That makes it's all, not that makes a leap a of faith. Me, dude. I gotta tell you. It is not a leap of faith. No, it's not, because you're not going to commit either way. I mean, to, to have a leap of faith, you're right. I, I, I said that wrong, because if you're not going to, if you automatically say, I don't know, it doesn't take a leap of faith to say, I don't know. You're right, bro. There you go. I'm 100%. Hey, man, listen, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me, man. I really sure. do. And I don't know how or why, but these things help me every now and then. I call you guys every now and then, man. And it's bizarre because, let me tell you, man, I probably shouldn't say this on the air, but I'm going to. I play at Thread Guild every other Sunday, and I'm in a gospel band, believe it or not. And I'm a bass player. And when I see you guys there, I just love the freedom of speech because the same place that we can actually go in there and play some music about, you know, the gospel, you can come in here and actually talk about how it's not really relevant to some people. And I just, you know, 
God bless America, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm well, no, I don't know what you're saying. You I know, know what you're saying, but you know, I'm not with you. <laughs> but hey, stop by sometime. Thanks a lot, Tracy. I appreciate right, bye it. Bye-bye, guys. Later. Bye. All right, we got about 17 minutes on the nose left. Uh, and one of the things we're going to do uh, is actually replay play the intro at the end of the show uh, for, for people who people might have tuned it. in late. Daniel went through a lot of effort uh, to do a special intro for show 666, and I like it so much that we're just going to play it twice. So we're going to do that towards the end of the show. As a reminder, the back cruise is coming up September 25th. The, the telephone number to call in is at the bottom screen. If you don't make it through today or you don't want to make it through today, you can email tv at atheist-community.org, and we'll do our best to answer it, although there's so much email, uh, the odds are good that it might not get an answer. We appreciate everybody for hanging on and, and engaging in the conversations. And we're going to, I don't know, do you got anything else before we go to the next call? Oh, I had a whole thing. I could have uh, gone on with Tracy, but that's all right. That's enough. That's got enough. It. Place to stop. All right. Well, we'll go on to George in Montreal. Hey, guys. Hey, George. Yes, I, uh, I want to talk about uh, the issue of morality, uh -huh. basically, and how uh, you hear uh, a lot of times from uh, various Christians that. Uh, Morality is only about rules coming from God, and that uh, it has nothing to do with whether what you are or what you do. But uh, what I respond usually is that uh, morality, moral laws, basically refer to interaction between people. And between people. so uh, when there, if there's only one person, for example, there's no need for morality. If there's only one person in the world, if there's only one mind, the morality is uh, inconsequential and uh, um, irrelevant which makes uh, the point that a god is the source of morality, makes it a bit of absurd. Okay. There's nothing for a god to interact with. Uh, what do you guys think about that? We agree. Yep. Yep. But the, uh, the other point that the, uh, I believe that Christians also agree that morality, moral laws, refer to an interaction, because what, uh, what's the best thing, they, what's the most thing they most often say about uh, morals, uh, that if, uh, if we atheists don't believe in God, we, would, we don't have any more. We'll do anything we want. So basically, they are saying that it's an interaction between God and people. That's, more, uh, that's what morality makes. But they don't, uh, they don't really accept that. Yeah, it's the interaction between people. Their, their God thing is irrelevant. I don't irrelevant. know. I think if you, if you cornered certain believers, they might be willing to say that it would be, say, wrong to covet your neighbor's ass. Even if there, even if no human beings, you know, much less donkeys existed, that it would still be wrong because God would still have that rule. You might find that, but that's, I mean, it's, it's nonsensical to talk about rules like that in the absence of people and the objects that the rules refer to, but... Um, and I'll go a step further that on that particular one, uh, their religious ideas, whether they came from a god or not, are just wrong. Well, yeah. That there is, in fact, nothing wrong with uh, coveting. Yeah. Sure, but the thing is that uh, where Christians always make a big deal that uh, morality must come from a transcendent singular being. Right. The whole right, point because is that you can't have a morality, which is about the interaction of people, yeah. from a single being. You can't do that. I, I, well, so anyways, that's I, all I wanted to say. Yeah. I don't want to hug them all the rest of the show. Have a nice night, guys. Cool. Thanks, George. Hey, Bye -bye. What, you, what you can have, I mean, let's, let's talk right. about this. Like one guy trapped on a desert island, right? He could say to himself, he's all there, he's there on the desert island all by himself. He could say, it is wrong to eat coconuts on a Tuesday. Yeah. Right? He could impose that rule on himself, right? But that's just him making that up. Right? Is it in any objective sense? Does that the fact that he has de decided that for himself make it true? No. Now, as soon as you have two people, and there's a practical concern, like we might accidentally kill ourselves by eating all the coconuts, so we're going to consciously make the decision jointly that we're going to stay away from the coconuts one day a week so that the coconut crop uh, can survive. Right. Now you have a basis for that, for that rule that they have made, and it means something. I guess it could mean it to that one guy if he was in the same issue. He's got a lovely you, you bunch know, of coconuts. You know what I'm saying? Um, it, the, 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 for any moral rules that don't track back to some practical reality are pointless in the first place and just a means of imposing your will on others.
All right. I'm done. Got Joseph in Reading. Hello. Hi. Yeah, I was wondering, what do you guys think of these prosperity gospel preachers that are out there? Um, they always give you the... They, they always tell you to send them money, and they give you these testimonials, uh -huh. and they're almost always positive, but the only time they're negative, they're sitting there laying a guilt trip on that person because they're questioning their faith, uh -huh. and they make them seem like bad people for some reason. And uh -huh. I've it? noticed that about the only people really getting prosperous off the prosperity gospel are the people preaching it. This is one of those occasions where I'm going to have to take a page out of Penn and Teller's book in order to avoid being sued. They're dicks. <laughs> um, that's my opinion. It is my opinion that they are exploitive dicks. Yeah, I would say that. Um, Thank you for it. I'd like to see... Yeah, thanks a lot for calling. Yeah. I'd actually like to see more investigation in this area. I'm not actually accusing them of being frauds because that might actually get me in trouble, but I would certainly like to see law enforcement actually get off their ass and begin investigating more and more things like this to determine whether or not the claims that they're making uh, are justified because if they're not, then they are in fact exploiting people's beliefs in order to rob them, uh, which makes them no different than fraudulent psychics and others uh, who have done right. this over and over again. It's, it's the same thing. It's telling people what they want to hear so you, they will give you their money. Yeah. And it's, by the way, one of the easiest things you could possibly do. Mm -hmm. Telling somebody what they want to hear. Uh, I mean, uh, unless you're like some socially awkward person who doesn't get personal interactions, it's really easy to tell somebody exactly uh, what they want to hear because usually all you have to do is start listening and they'll tell you what they want to hear, mm -hmm. you know. Do you think that I did the right thing? Well, of course you did, sweetie. This, it was exactly what God wanted you to do. Got a 20? Uh, we got Kyle in Olympia. How are you? Hello? Yes, Kyle? Hi, uh, am, I, am I there? You yes. are. Yes, hi. How you doing? Uh, I just want to make a quick, quick comment about uh, Tracy that was just uh, on there a few minutes ago. Yeah. Yeah, I was in the same position, the exact same position um, a while back. And I just wanted to say something that someone told me. Um, you know, I, don't, I hope he's still in the air so he can hear this. Um, what they said is that if there is, a, if there was a God that created that first, big, the, the Big Bang, let's say God created the Big Bang, he caused it, um, then you would need something that created God in the first place, and then so on before that. So you don't really need a God because then you would need a creator for God. Uh, that's true. So, I mean, that's like the, the thing that really helped me when I was in his position. Yeah, and uh, it's part of what Jeff was saying and kind of leading to was this, that they're positing this huge complicated thing that they're not you offering can, an explanation. You can, you can, of course, also argue that, uh, that y you need an explanation for even an incredibly simple, you know, hot point of super dense um, stuff. Right, right. The alternative to the the God, but that's where you get into. Well, you know, look at the two things you're being asked to accept without any explanation. And uh, the further difference, of course, is that physicists are working on an explanation for the origins of that the uh, the of those starting conditions. Right, those incredibly simplistic starting conditions. Physics or physicists are able to work on that. On the, you know, the flip side is religion, where the only reason you were even talking about this invisible cosmic uh, consciousness guy is that some uh, mystics in the, you know, who, um, doing whatever it is that mystics do, came up with this idea. There's no testing to determine that it's true. There's no, there's no reason to accept anything that they say. I, I think, given those two choices, it's obvious which which place to put your uh, your trust at the moment. Right. And, well, and even now, um, I do a lot of uh, reading on quantum physics and all that. Yeah. But I just wanted to make it simple as possible for for um, for the uh, caller. You know, that's that's the first thing that actually got me through that little you know uh, dilemma or whatever you call it. Yeah. Do you want to recommend a particular book? Uh, 
it was I, I'm not really sure um, it was a whole lot of things that I've read articles and yeah uh, in a whole bunch of different websites so I'm not really sure um, something that I could recommend specifically okay that's fair but that's all I just wanted to add uh, thanks for the uh, second song sure thanks for calling <clears throat> thanks a lot and I, I actually that was Luis again uh, I don't know if I hit the wrong button or if it was labeled wrong or what but line to Kyle. Kyle are you Kyle, there? Kyle are you still there? Yeah, hello. Hey, Kyle. Yeah, sorry about you? that confusion. Oh, I'm great. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask you if you had heard about the Iranian woman, Sakina Mohammadi Ashtiani. Yeah. Yep. She's been sentenced to execution because of adultery. Yep. Um, she was going to be stoned to death, but um, there's already been a lot of outcry about that. So they've decided not to stone her, but... Um, I believe they're still planning to execute her, possibly by hanging or some something else. Her husband is already dead, apparently, and the reason everybody um, knows about this is because her two children have um, been pleading with the world to help uh, bring their mother back home to them. There have been um, YouTube videos discussing it. Um, I actually saw a video um, that Aaron Ra put on his channel. Um, and so I just wanted to um, bring that to your attention and sort of ask if everyone could um, read about that. You, there's an article on Iranian.com, which is I-R-A-N-I-A-N.com, called Crushed Under Stones. And... Um, you can sign a petition on several sites. That, well, one of them is Free Sakine. That would be S R E E S A K I N E H dot org. Um, yeah. And hopefully, if enough people um, bring this to the public attention, then we can, you know, make a make enough noise that. Um, this I, will be reconsidered. I, I really wish that that was true, and and I hope that's true. And by all means, you know, everybody get out there and sign whatever petitions you like. I just don't think that we have any reason to think that the Iranian government is going to care a bit about what a bunch of you know non-Iranian infidels uh, say on a petition. And while I'm not the current president of the United States, if I was. I'd be I'd be working full time for some kind of diplomatic solution, and then I'd have the seals on standby to go in and rescue her. Um, but my views on foreign policy uh, may differ from people who are actually in charge. Um, I don't care. I don't care if if it, it doesn't matter to me whether she was uh, guilty or not, or whether she had kids or not, or whether her husband's dead or not. I don't care if she was you know uh, taken. Uh, taking money and lining them up at the door, it, it, she doesn't get to, you know you don't get to kill her. Yeah, and it's, I don't care how much they soften the execution. Yeah. I mean, a, oh, we're not gonna stone if her. they announced, oh, it's just going to be you know a very uh, very calm, pleasant, lethal injection. It's like that doesn't make it any better. Yeah, what difference does that make? So, um, I agree with you that uh, it it does seem like a long shot. Um, but even, I mean, assuming that, you know, there's no way that we can possibly stop this execution, I think it's worthwhile still to sure. bring this out in the open. Sure. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm less skeptical than Matt about that. And, and there if have they, been a number of, of cases in recent years where public outcry has apparently caused a change in the, the carrying out of, of uh, sentences like this. In Iran? Um, they're, in they're, the Middle East. They do talk about that in the article on Iranian.com. Yeah. Um, there, there have been instances uh, recently where people have been saved from execution. And Matt's question was, have those those incidents happened in Iran? Yes. Well, yes. then I'm more optimistic than I was. Excellent. Um, and and I, I think it would be nice if world leaders stood up and said that if, in fact, you go through with this... Uh, you don't think for a second that, that this is the end, that you can kill her and trust everybody to remember, you know, to, to forget in a week or so. Um, th this is something where it's time for not only 
uh, the world leaders to step up and do their job, but the United Nations to step up and say, look, uh, your civil rights abuses, uh, you know, we've, we've done a nudge, nudge, wink, wink. We've tried to ignore them in, 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 when it comes to, to trade agreements and things like that. Uh, but now you're just a perverse society. And we should not, we cannot in good conscience call ourselves good citizens, good friends, good anything, and allow you to continue doing that. Uh, and, and, and actually enforce that when it happens instead of just, oh, okay, they killed another woman. You know, they killed another person. Mm-hmm. Let them, you I know, think, I, I think our that's sort of quirky the, Middle Eastern cousins. Mm-hmm. The, the Iranian government does seem to be hoping that they can just um, kill her and get it over with and have everybody say, oh, well, she's already dead, so no use in um, raising any issues anymore, right? Yeah. Um, anyway, well. Thanks a lot Thank for you. calling, Kyle. I got like a minute and some change left, and I want to get one last call on before we re-roll the credits. So, appreciate All right. it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Goodbye. Kyle. Mal- Malcolm in Austin is uh, dropped off the line. So, hit, I'll just I'll just hit a statement. People always want a reason for things, but some things can't be understood rationally. The wind exists, but you can't see it. God is like the wind. You want to take that real quick? Uh, we can't see the wind because the wind is made of relatively transparent um, uh, molecules, but we can certainly detect the wind in all ki- with all kinds of uh, ways, um, and we can't do that when it comes to your God. So there is a difference. Yeah, your, your, your God is not like the wind. Yeah. So in order to make that work, you'd have to find some other thing, which I absolutely just right for here. sure exists, that is also completely not detectable. And you can't. Because that stuff like, things like Odin and Zeus and Apollo, you know, I just that's did the more other work stuff. than every God in history. Run the credits. <laughs>